person, similar to the guy that shot up the uh, black people uh, there in Charleston. So I think it's the same thing. And uh, it's just all part of the media making our problems about somebody's skin color as a diversion from the big mega bank screwing us over. Neil, thank you so much for the call. Uh, Denise in Illinois, thanks for holding. You're on the air. Hi, hi. thanks for taking my call. Um, I wanted to agree with you strongly about these um, uh, antidepressant psychotropic drugs. I was prescribed them in the late 90s to control chronic pain. Um, I didn't have depression, a uh, history of it. Well, they push anything. it on people that have car wrecks now. And I wound up overdosing on those pills. So then they put me in a different one. Same thing. I won't touch those with a 10-foot pole. What was the experience like? It was horrible. Um, I finally was able to, you know, uh, I fired my doctor, basically, and I, I saw another doctor, and he said, you know, you're, it's the pills. Just don't take the pills. I said, you know what? So I went against medical advice. Um, I still have chronic pain. Um, I'm able to deal with it. Some days I have to lay down and whatnot. I'd rather have the pain, the pain and have my brain and be able sure. to, to think clearly. Well, God bless I you, ma'am, for that testimony. We got to jump. Um, Joe Biggs, and this even came out in the news, they would order combat troops to just take painkillers to get them addicted, and then they would fly in masses of it. And then afterwards, they would try to use that to take their rights away and things once they got out of the military. I mean, this is all part of setting people up, controlling people. It's social engineering. People should just be aware of it. Well, bravetheworld.com. Julia, stay there because there's an 18-minute segment coming up. And if that goes well, you can do the last segment, six minutes. Uh, so you've got the next 30 minutes here on air. I often do this with a guest that joins us in the fourth hour. I just walk off and leave you in here <laughs> uh, in the TV studio. So, so that's coming up. I'm sorry for those that died today. I'm sorry for the hundreds of thousands Incredibly killed by sad. Hillary Clinton's ISIS people, too. Uh, thank you so much for coming into town. Good, to, good to meet you in person. Nice to meet you. We're we're on the march. We're going to be hosting. Stay there. On the run. Hi there. I'm filling in for Alex Jones. My name is Julia Transky of Brave the World. And we're going to take some calls. But first, I want to plug a little local event in, happening in Austin, Texas. And it's happening at the Draft House on Lamar Street. And we are doing a screening of the Deep Web, mov the Deep Web movie, which is uh, the coverage of the Ross Ulbricht trial and the issues of free speech in America and how they've been devolving and Alex Winter the director of the movie will be there and the entire thing is a fundraiser organized by the crypto show which is a great show as well and it covers everything from Bitcoin to, abor uh, to abortion has some great guests so we'll be doing a live broadcast uh, from 8 o'clock to maybe midnight and the movie starts at 7 p.m. and all proceeds go to Lynn Ulbrich who was a previous guest on the Alex Jones show and to help uh, bring about the appeal of her son who committed a nonviolent crime and basically starting a website where free, uh, where, where free trade was facilitated. So come out and support us and watch a great movie and meet the director at the Draft House tonight at 7 p.m. So we're going to do a caller. Uh, maybe let's take Brent from Texas. Uh, hi, Brent. You're on the Alex Jones Show. Hi, thank you for taking my call. I was actually hoping to get in with, uh, uh, or after the joke caller, or the somewhat serious caller that called earlier regarding stating no things had happened that Alex had predicted. Now, you yep. know, he says there's no FEMA camps, but it wasn't, you know, but two or three weeks ago, we were reading articles about how there were secret detention facilities in Detroit where people were being held without trial for indefinite periods of time. Now, you could call it a FEMA camp, call it a tomato, a tomato, it doesn't really matter. Now, uh, regarding the FM3-39 document, if you read in that document, it states that people will be processed by their Social Security numbers and uh, that the prisoners via, or I guess the citizens is what we would call them, are not going to be eligible to become any kind of trustee or have any job inside the prison. So basically... Uh, if you're a citizen, you'll have no kind of say-so in these detention camps. And if I may, I'd like to say one more thing, the original reason why I called in. Yeah, go ahead, of course. All right, thank you. Um, uh, around April the 20th, I had called into the Alex Jones Show, and I had ran across information that said 
uh, Jade Helms stood for the Joint Assistant for Deployment and Execution, Homeland Eradication of Local Militias. Now, when I called in and said that, you know, David Knight uh, was the person taking calls at the time, and he actually chastised me a bit, stating, you know, that we need hard evidence with claims such as these, which is totally understandable. But since that time, I've heard callers call in stating that Alex Jones has said this himself. Now, that is totally not true. And the only thing that I've heard Alex Jones mention on this, I believe it was around April 23rd or 24th, he stated there was a man that used to have a radio station or a radio program in Austin named Sergeant Sam or something along those lines that he had got that information from. But at no point in time did Alex say this was uh, his information that he had got or that it was set in stone. So this is just, once again, people trying to play words off of each other to fit their agenda instead of looking at the actual picture and seeing the truth and things. Right, and we have this kind of mentality where we run a narrative in our own minds, and it's like a stage play. You you have a character that you've been programmed to play, and you do it because your overlords are watching, and they reward you when you when you play your role properly. And what is this hypocrisy about? Uh, you know, I understand the full legitimate proof, but the government is all about preventative action, and they don't have full legitimate proof of a lot of things that they claim to be protecting us against, yet they get to uh, do the preemptive and the preventative uh, systematic action against us to protect us. Yet, we're not allowed to do the same. I mean, we can't own guns because, you know, everyone's okay and everything, you know, we're paranoid and everything's all right and everything's safe. Well, what if it isn't? Why can't we have the option of this preventative self-defense? And I come from, I come from the former Soviet Union and we invented FEMA camps. We had the largest gulag system ever and we still have it and it's actually um i'll tie this into the flu a fluoride debate i don't need any proof about whether fluoride is good or bad for you the only fact i need to know is that the first time fluoridation was used in water was uh, for the water sources of the prisoners in the huge gulag system in siberia and <laughs> that was to pacify the people so no riots would erupt uh let's take another caller what about um, Paul from New Mexico. Paul, you're on the air on the Alex Jones Show, and uh, you're speaking to Julia Transky of BraveTheWorld.com. Yeah, um, I wanted to like uh, pose a question to all the people out there who are listening. I'd say, who's the blame for this, for the shooting? Choice A, the guns. B, the Second Amendment. C, the individual. D, SSRI drugs. E, our culture that they put the agenda that our culture pushes, or choice uh, F, both uh, C and D. It's the individual and the SSRI drugs. Right, like because because the individual is not an island. The individual is influenced and sculpted by factors. So, of course, it has to be more than one. Yeah, and, you know, it's just like how they, they culturally and the, they... Uh, Collectively and selectively, um, the, the gatekeepers decide what's going to be reported on and what's not going to be reported on to push their agenda to destroy the Bill of Rights and our Constitution as uh, humanity is manipulated um, into a global order. And as a institution, as we're bought off by the institutions, as the globalists buy off the institutions, our sheriffs, our, our uh, mayors, our politicians... It's like, are we going to selectively blame uh, Alex for road driving his Dodge Hellcat through an intersection and killing a family? Are we going to now ban all, all the Dodge Hellcats that are out there? Um, that's why I don't trust Trump, because you know, he, he pays for all his favors. You know, he pays, mm -hmm. buys off corporations and whatnot, versus like uh, um, what... Uh, Rand Paul, you know, he asked for contributions from, he asked for favors, he asked for contributions from his boss. His right, boss, well, it's American. interesting when a crook admits he's a crook because the system allows him to be, right? Very, very good points. Thank you, Eric. Um, let's go to Dave. Dave, you're on the Alex Jones Show. 
Hi, Julia. I think you're going to be a good a good guest host. Keep it up. Thank you. I'd like to move here. You know, um, I never. I'm sorry to interrupt your call, but I just really want to point out my love for Austin because as soon as I got here, I go to a gas station, and a 16 year old boy opens the door for me, and I walk through, and I say, "Thank you very much," and he says. Yes, ma'am. I'm <laughs> living in San Francisco for a month. Nothing even came close to like to that. So I just I love it here. But go on. What would you like to say? Okay. Well, a couple things. One is I think they should put a fence around Washington D.C. Actually, yeah. parts of Northern California are really nice and old fashioned. And I've lived here a long time. I mean, I'm basically a California redneck. So we're not <laughs> all like like that. Uh, and my comment was uh, specific to the film that you did a long time ago on feminism, which was my first real exposure to Thank feminism. Thank you for watching. And I took that film and I posted links to it in Cindy Sheehan's, uh, Cindy Sheehan for President site, because I liked Cindy Sheehan. I liked a lot of what she said, in particular her anti-war stance. And boy, did I get clobbered for that. I got booted out of her. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was, it was the end. Well, was you're a man. You're not allowed to have a voice on uh, feminism. Oh boy, yeah. Anyway, no great loss. But uh, the, I have a question for you, and then I'll take the answer off air if you don't mind. Uh, Canada. Could you uh, talk about Canada a little bit more? You seem to have quite a bit of experience. In, uh, yeah, it's been really nice talking to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Canada. All right. Well... I guess I can start with some of our gun laws. I mean, Canada has a really bad one where if you have your gun license and it expires, then you're treated as a criminal. So although I took the course and I legally own a gun and I know I have all my right papers, if I forget or I'm hospitalized or something um, and I don't file to my overlords and get that piece of paper renewed, then I am a criminal and I can go to jail for having an expired gun license. So that's that's one thing that's uh, quite sad about the state of affairs there. Uh, Canada has very rich gun ownership, very rich hunting community. And aside from the major cities, you drive out a little bit and... Uh, the people are actually very American in mentality, if I can say that, because Canadians in cities tend to have this bigotry against Americans. You know, they, I've, I've, I've used the term America to encompass the whole uh, continent, and they say things like, oh, don't. Don't put us in the same category as the United States. Like, we're better. I'm like, well, <laughs> Canada is America's hat. Like, our, we kind of, um, like, Harper panders to America and our uh, government officials take the blueprint of America and do a lot of things in Canada with it. And apart from our socialist health care, it's not that different. I mean, of course, the people are different, but it's not that different. Um I don't know, the healthcare thing, people bring up, oh, we have really wonderful healthcare. Canada has amazing healthcare if your bone is sticking out and you're visibly bleeding and in pain. If something's wrong with you chronically, internally, something's undiagnosed or you need a specialist, there's a very high chance that you will die. And we have one of the highest rates of deaths in waiting rooms. Uh, what else can I say about Canada? Um, beautiful country, passive people, uh, very, you know, again, in the major cities, like in most places, very uh, liberal and progressive. And uh, because we have such a high standard of living, people don't really pay attention to the realities that uh, others face. Although there are so many cases in Canada that go overlooked in terms of rights and freedom of speech. I have something on my website about our anti-defamation law and that's pretty terrible basically if you say anything about anybody in canada they can sue you dry for anti-defamation and the funniest thing about that law you don't even have to prove that the person was um the person's reputation or career or pers uh, persona was hurt or damaged in any way when you file an anti-defamation lawsuit it is presupposed that defamation occurred so that's a unique thing about canada as well um and i guess i'll end on the most tragic one of our it's not even a law it's a lack of law canada is one of the t three countries that has abortion to the moment of birth. So we're in the same category as North Korea, China, and Canada. You can abort a baby 
um, as long, like up to the moment of birth. So it's not a human being until it fully exits the 